labor organizations, faith leaders, and labor unions fighting against the Trump administration's proposed $6.2 billion cuts to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. These proposed cuts to HUD would have devastating impact on families here in New York and indeed across the nation. What does the No Cuts Coalition want? One, we demand that the Trump administration abandon these cuts. And two, we want true investment in HUD and the important initiatives that it supports. Today, you will hear, hear from members from the No Cuts Coalition, as well as elected officials who support this coalition as we move forward together in preparation for a rally on Thursday, April 20th, 12 noon at 26 Federal Plaza, when hundreds of members of the No Cuts Coalition will descend upon the HUD building to make our voices heard as we say no cuts. And we are thrilled as part of the No Cuts Coalition and extremely proud of our senior senator from the state of New York, a fighter for families across New York and this nation who is standing today with the No Cuts Coalition. I give to you all Senator Charles Schumer. Thank you, Afia, and I'm so glad to be here. I want to thank my colleagues, our chair of the uh, Housing <laughs> Committee and the City Council, Richie Torres, our great new senator, Alcantara, from uh, Washington Heights and East I don't know. Where. And from Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay. This place. Um, and so many of the leaders of the housing community, of course, uh, uh, Chairman Olatoya has done a great job here, too. So let me say a few things here. First, New York City has a huge investment in public housing. Uh, there are over 600,000 people who live in public housing. And these buildings are a billion multi-billion dollar investment. To let them go down the drain is not, is something no smart business person would do. And yet, the budget that's come out for 2018 is totally devastating. A 68% cut in the capital program. Now, the capital program doesn't mean build new housing. It means when a roof is leaking or a boiler is gone, they can fix it and put a new boiler in. What businessman, what property owner, including the president, would let their property deteriorate? Well, the federal government, since the 30s, since the Franklin D. Roosevelt, has built public housing, and under presidents, Democrat and Republican, has realized that maintaining that housing, both in terms of capital and operating costs, is a wise investment. But this administration has done cuts to housing like we have never, ever seen. You also have cuts in the Section 8 program, which allows people to find a place to live in private housing. You have cuts across the board. The home program, upstate New York, home program, CDBG, is all they have to keep the housing up there. And it would be gone. They eliminate those programs. So I've never seen cuts like this before, and they make no sense from a humane point of view, all the people who live here, but from a financial point of view, because we have this investment in public housing. So I am going to do everything I can to prevent any of these cuts from being implemented in, 20, in the 2018 budget. Thank we are gonna make a really strong stand on that issue. As somebody who's defended public housing throughout um, my career and you know under President Obama we were allowed to do some good things uh, in public housing including federalizing a lot of these pro of these developments which provided more federal money we don't want to undo all that progress here plain and simple so I stand with my colleagues in government with our leaders in the public housing and uh, uh, general community coalition to fight these cuts tooth and now, there are some, and when I spoke to the Secretary of HUD before his nomination, who think the federal government should have no role in housing, no role in transportation, no role in education. This is like the 1890s. We can't let it stand, and we won't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from the chair of public housing in the Committee for Public Housing in New York City, Council Member Richie Torres. Well, it's an honor to be here with everyone, but especially 
Senator Schumer, I'm sure we could all agree that public housing has no greater friend than Senator Schumer. So thank you. My mother lives in public housing. I grew up in public housing. Thank you for everything you've done. I'm part of the legacy that you, you, you continue uh, to preserve. Um, as many of you know, uh, ben Carson recently got stuck in an elevator. Yes. And I'm convinced it's divine intervention. Right. It was meant to send a message that housing is infrastructure, and when you neglect infrastructure, you get stuck in elevators. Yes. But for us, affordable housing is about more than brick and mortar. It's about preserving opportunity. It's about preserving the possibility that a kid from the Bronx can grow up to become the youngest elected official in New York City. And we know that there can be no American dream without affordable housing, right? There can be no land of opportunity here in New York City without affordability. And the greatest contribution that the federal government makes to New York City is the role that it plays directly and indirectly in housing millions of people, right? Every major funding source for affordable housing, whether it be public housing or Section 8 or the Low Income Housing Tax Credit or the Home Program, or CDBG funding comes from the federal government. Right? The New York City Housing Authority is primarily dependent on federal funding. It manages public housing and Section 8. And without NYCHA, without Section 8 and public housing, New York City would be unlivable and unaffordable to the poorest New Yorkers. And so I'm here to say I am grateful to Senator Schumer for everything you've done, but we owe you more than our gratitude. We owe you our partnership. And we are going to stand right behind you in the struggle to resist Donald Trump and his right-wing assault on the social safety net. The leadership of Chuck Schumer is the most powerful force that stands between New York City and the worst of the Donald Trump presidency. And I'm putting my bet on Chuck Schumer.
Thank you, Chairwoman. Before I bring up our next speaker, I want to acknowledge that we have community groups like good old Lower East Side here. We have the laborers, uh, Local 78 is here. We thank them for standing with us. We thank the members from WE Act for standing with us as part of the No Cost Coalition, United Neighborhood Houses, and so many others that we'll continue to name throughout this program. New York Communities for Change. I am remiss. New York Immigration Coalition. So before I bring up our next speaker, Senator Marisol Alcantara. Thank you very much, Fia. Thank you, Senator Schumer. We definitely know that a boy from Brooklyn can take definitely on a boy from Queens. So we are betting on Senator Chuck Schumer uh, to win this victory for all of us. As we know, we live in a city that is being gentrified every day. That when a black or brown family moves out, they are not replaced by somebody that looks like us. Um, we have seen Harlem, Washington Heights, and West Harlem is not a place anymore that work on um, communities of color, immigrants, um, that was made up of mostly Latino and African-American family. Okay. And NYCHA is the last place where you have poor working class and people of color that live in the city. And NYCHA residents all right now live under horrible conditions, as we know. There are some places in NYCHA residents where you have leaking roofs, where there's crime, uh, rats, and all kinds of trouble. And with President Trump proposed cuts, NYCHA will be worse than it is right now. We are all fighting to work with NYCHA so NYCHA can be a decent place where families can raise their kids, where, old, where people can grow old. And we are here to say that we are not gonna stand for any cuts to NYCHA. We are not gonna let Trump take our kids our families out of New York City, that New York belongs to everybody. And that this right here, I saw my man Steve from the New York Immigration Coalition running here. And I said, this is New York, where you have people from all different backgrounds, all different ethnic groups sitting here saying that we are not gonna take any more abuse and we're not gonna take any cuts from NYCHA. What we need to do is put more money in NYCHA, not cut money from NYCHA. NYCHA residents deserve better. And thank you to all the NYCHA members that are here that even though you live on the, some of these buildings are under subhuman conditions, you are still here fighting. And you guys are organized, come out in the street, and you defend your right to be treated as a human being and to live in the city. A lot of the NYCHA residents were the people that were in New York when nobody wanted to be in New York. And now that New York is cool and everybody wants to be in New York, they want to kick us out. And we want to let everybody know that we're not going anywhere, that this is our city and that we have a right to be here. Quiero darle las gracias a todos los grupos comunitarios que están aquí, principalmente a los residentes de NYCHA que han vivido en esta ciudad cuando nadie ha querido estar aquí y ahora no quieren sacar. Le queremos mandar un mensaje al presidente Trump, al Ben Carson, que esta es nuestra ciudad que nosotros no nos vamos y que vamos a pelear para que NYCHA se mantenga viva y un lugar digno donde las personas puedan crear su familia. Muchas gracias y hasta la victoria. Sí, 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 sí. Uh -huh. So, on April 20th, we are going to be at 26 Fed Plaza, the No Cuts Coalition, making clear that we are fighting against these cuts to HUD for our families and for our communities. From New York Communities for Change, I have the lovely Elzora Cleveland. Well, it's great to see all these faces and all this support. My name is Elzora Cleveland. I'm a community leader organizer with New York Communities for Change and a very, very good friend for Community Voices Heard. Uh, I have to thank our senator, our city council members, our HUD members, and all the resident leaderships that we have here today with us. This is a significant standing place, if you know, a home of Ruby Goldberg, an area where she started. But here, just behind you in this building above us, is our senior center. This is where our seniors stay, just above the Hudson Guild. This is where generations and generations of children, this place, the play area behind here, I played in this play yard. I've worked in the Hudson Gill. My mother moved into the Elliott Houses in 1968, and she is still here. And we have raised generations of our children in, up, and out of the community to develop communities of their own and strengthen what the communities have. 
I just want to stick to some really quick talking points that I noted for myself. I want to make sure you don't miss. Um, the threat to cut $16 million in shelter funding. Could you imagine the effect that that would have in all of us around the country? Could you imagine the effect in New York City? We are struggling with homelessness today. Imagine suffering a cut like this. Our senior center housing. Um, we have a wait list of over 200,000 New York City seniors. They would be stranded um, and we would undermine maintenance of the ex existing senior housing centers like this one above the Hudson Gill. We are so proud to have these leaders and these community members stand behind us in advocating to make sure that we get things done right here. But we need everyone's support. And so please, please be, make sure that you're at 26 Federal Plaza on April 20th at 12 noon. New Yorkers, we're calling on you. This is the time to stand up. The budget is not finalized. We are still the advocates that need to get this work done, and we're working hard. Senator, I thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. And all other members, Senator, as well. Thank you. Richie, you're amazing. We look forward to seeing you. I'll be there. Thank you. From good old Lower East Side, we have David Braswell. Thank you. My name is Dave Braswell, and I'm a long-time Lower East Side resident. I've been living in Jacob Beach for 63 years. Okay, and as a resident and as a member of Gold, this is a this budget is, shows deterrent, a deterrent to the uh, housing, the NYCHA, with already a $17 backlog in capital improvements. The budget means residents will never see repairs such as elevators, plumbing facades, plumbing, plumbing, excuse me, plumbing, plumbing and, um, to and toxic mold. Okay, I've seen this, I've seen this deteriorate for the past 10 years. And as a resident, any remaining public housing will be destroyed. We stand here today to fight these cuts. We stand here today. I'd like to thank our public officials and the people coming to this particular event. You need to be there. This is your house. This is your place. This is New York City. It doesn't belong to the federal government. It belongs to us. And please, show up, be there, and We'll be glad to see you. God bless. All right, everyone. We've been joined by City uh, Council Member Corey Johnson. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Got a haircut for the evening. Yes, I did with the little hair I had left. Uh, my name is Corey Johnson. I represent the third district of the New York City Council, which includes this neighborhood of the Chelsea Elliott houses and the Fulton houses just south of here. As I'm sure it has been said before I arrived, uh, all of us collectively should be appalled by what the Trump administration has in store for public housing residents and New Yorkers and folks in all five boroughs and across the country when it comes to these draconian cuts that they have talked about. They have made clear what their values are. They are hell-bent on tax cuts for the rich by gutting vital services for our most vulnerable citizens. Everything they have done, whether it's appointing Ben Carson as Secretary of HUD or Scott Pruitt as EPA Administrator, the list goes on. And Minority Leader Schumer led the fight on the floor against those nominees. Every person they have put forward has been someone who has been antithetical to the mission of the agency that they have been in charge of keeping. And choosing Ben Carson to run HUD, someone who has no background in housing, someone who, I guess he was in Miami last week and got stuck in an elevator, uh, showing the needs of infrastructure across the country. These are the folks that they are putting forward. And thank God we have Chuck Schumer uh, leading the fight and Senator Gillibrand leading the fight and members of the House uh, congressional delegation uh, from New York leading the fight against these horrible cuts. Uh, the list goes on, but I will say 
the, the there's cognitive dissonance between the president's budget, which he released, and what he actually says, which is not surprising. He talks about infrastructure. He guts the Gateway Tunnel project, which is vital for the region. He talks about infrastructure. He guts the Second Avenue uh, subway. He talks about infrastructure. He's gutting money for public housing and vital public projects across the country. It doesn't make any sense. His rhetoric doesn't mean anything. What matters are these budget documents, and what matters is the draconian, horrible, detrimental budget package that Majority Leader McConnell and House Speaker Ryan have put forward. And I am so glad that New Yorkers are standing together, that CBH is working on this and getting the grassroots riled up, that we have a good chair of NYCHA that knows the issues and is out there fighting on behalf of the half a million folks that live in public housing in New York City, and that we have the great Chuck Schumer and my colleagues behind me. We will keep up the fight. We will fight back. New York City has been the face of resistance since before January 20th, and we will keep that moving forward. Let's keep fighting. Thank you very much. That's right. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. We've also been joined by State Senator Brad Hoyleman. Thank you. I'm, I'm really here to, to emphasize my thanks to Senator Chuck Schumer uh, as the state senator who represents part of Elliott Chelsea houses. You know, as New Yorkers, we can have a lot of confidence in our senior senator from New York. So I think he deserves a round of applause. Thank you for everything you're doing, Senator Schumer. And as my colleagues have said, it is unacceptable that the President of the United States, that his administration would propose to cut funding for our public housing. On today, tax day, April 18th, when the good people of Elliott Chelsea Houses may be rushing to the post office to pay their taxes on time, we have to ask, is President Trump paying his taxes? What do his taxes show? Why, as working class New Yorkers, are we held to a different standard than, of all people, the President of the United States? So today, today, we unite, we stand shoulder to shoulder with our city, our federal officials. We will fight back. We will not normalize a budget that cuts to the bone our essential services, our public housing, the lifeblood of New York City. Thank you very much. So the senator talked about fighting, and we know that the fight on these cuts starts on Thursday, April, April 20th at 26 Fed Plaza. And you want to talk about leading the resistance. I'm so glad that we're joined today by the head of the New York State Working Families Party, Bill Lipton. It's great to be here with CVH and with our leader, Chuck Schumer. Um, I don't even like to use the word minority. It's our leader. Uh, with Shola and, 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 and Council Members Johnson and Senator uh, Hoyleman and so many others. Um, you know, Steve Bannon likes to talk about the destruction of the administrative state. Um, and meanwhile, while that's going on, we, ha we witnessed on Sunday uh, uh, an Easter egg uh, debacle uh, where we could, he couldn't, our, our, the administration couldn't even put together uh, uh, a a, uh, a well-organized traditional Easter egg roll. Um, I mentioned both of these things to say whether it's a deliberate plan or whether sheer incompetence, we're witnessing an assault on our government like we've never seen before in the history of our country. And whether it's housing, what we're talking about here today, or environmental regulations, or food safety, or so many other things, the impact of this assault is going to be so tangible for people. We're not talking about an abstract policy debate. We're talking about people's lives are going to not just be diminished, but people are going to die because of these devastating cuts that are being proposed. There's nothing we can do to stabilize a life more than provide affordable housing, affordable, affordable safe housing for, 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 for working people. And these cuts are going to devastate our city and working people across this country. Uh, we're gonna fight them like we fought against health care with the senator's leadership and, and help. We're gonna fight 
uh, uh, these, th this phony tax plan. We're going to fight to make sure that we get to see what's in these tax returns that the president has. And we're going to, we're going to, and we're going to, I, I believe we're going to win. The health care thing was, uh, a, the health care victory was an incredible victory. And I think there's more where that came from if we stand united and we fight back. Thank you. that are going to be affecting rent-stabilized tenants. We have Marika Williams for the ANHD. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marika Williams. I'm the Deputy Director at the Association for Neighborhood and Housing Development, where we work to create, preserve, and protect affordable housing and economic opportunity for low-income New Yorkers across all boroughs. We work with so many of the groups that are here today, our 100 members across the city who are local neighborhood-based groups. Um, and it's important when we're talking about all of this to realize and to think about, this is about our homes. This is about our neighbors' homes. This is not just a NYCHA issue. This is not just a Section 8 issue. This is going to affect all of us, every single New Yorker. This compromises um, HPD's ability to do code enforcement. What happens when buildings start crumbling on the block, right? This, is, this will gut our entire code enforcement budget. This compromises our ability to create home ownership opportunities for low and moderate income New Yorkers across the city. Um, it also will impact things like our ability to respond in a future storm. Most of our Sandy recovery money came from CDBG dollars. Right? How are we going to be able to respond to the next environmental disaster if we don't have something like CDBG at our, at our hands? Right? This is why is what Senator Schumer has been committed to for decades. Um, he has been our anchor um, and our advocate as affordable housing providers, tenant rights, tenant leaders, economic opportunity, thinking about jobs. Um, we thank him for being a partner and being committed in this. And the cross section of this is, is clear in who is here. Environmental groups, affordable housing developers, tenants' rights groups. We've got labor, we've got unions, right? We all know that this is about all of us. It's about where we come home to every single day. So we urge NHD, all of our groups urge every single New Yorker, homeowner, tenant, renter, NYCHA resident, Section 8 holder, everybody should understand that this is about all of us. And we expect to see as many New Yorkers as possible out at the No Cuts rally on April 20th. Thank you. And as Marika said, these cuts impact so many of us, seniors, rent-stabilized tenants, veterans, tenants in public housing, people of goodwill across the state of New York. And we know as part of New York what makes New York great are immigrants. And these cuts have an impact on our immigrant community. Up next, we have Steve Choi from the New York Immigration Coalition. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Are we ready to say no cuts? No cuts. Are we ready to say no cuts? No cuts. When I say no, you say cuts. No cuts. No cuts. No cuts. No cuts. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Steve Choi. I am so proud to be here on behalf of the New York Immigration Coalition. And I want to thank Community Voices Heard, because they have been on the front lines of the immigration fight, saying no ban, no wall, and no raids. And so we are thankful to be here today, standing shoulder to shoulder with CBH to say no cuts. I also want to thank Senator Schumer. When we brought out 30,000 people to Battery Park to protest the Trump administration's immoral Muslim and refugee ban, Senator Schumer was there. And so he stands on the side of the people. Right now he is playing a leadership role in the budget negotiations, saying there will be no wall. And we need him. We look to him for his continued leadership to say no cuts. Brothers and sisters, we are here today because an attack against one is an attack against all. We understand that when the Trump administration targets public housing, he is targeting New York City. So in a city where one million residents live in public housing, in a city that is 40% immigrant, we are talking about hundreds of thousands of immigrants living in public housing, who will be directly affected. And you've heard all that is going to happen if these cuts happen. You've heard about the fact that thousands of people may become homeless, that hundreds of thousands of people will suffer from what my brother David talked about, the stopped up toilets, the mold, 
the roats, the rats and the roaches and the mice, all of these things are situations that cry out for more investment, for more money, for more resources. But this Trump administration is trying to cut that. And we know why, because this is part of the Trump administration's agenda to target public housing residents, to target immigrants, to target minorities and communities of color. Are we going to let that happen? No. no. Are we going to let that happen? No. Are we going to fight back? Yes. Are we going to resist? Yes. Are we going to rise up against this agenda? Yes. The New York Immigration Coalition is proud to stand together with all our allies. We will continue to fight on April 20th. We will to continue to fight on May 1st joining with so many others, hundreds of thousands across this country, to push back against the Trump administration's agenda. And we will not stop until justice is served. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out here today. We expect to see you on Thursday, April 20th, 12 noon at 26 Federal Plaza. Any questions, folks? Yeah, uh, Senator. Questions? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, um, Senator, today's, today's tax day. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about tax returns. I just wanted to get your thoughts, um, if you could elaborate on some of the comments you've made regarding whether uh, the president's refusal to yes. release his tax returns will complicate your negotiations going forward on tax reform. Yeah, well, look, the president, by not releasing his tax returns, makes tax reform even harder. Because every time he proposes something, people are going to say, is he doing it for our benefit or for his own benefit and so i have said if he wants to pass tax reform one of the first things he should do is release his tax returns yes. even if he doesn't want to pass tax reform he should release his tax returns yes. it is not fair when you're president of the united states you're no longer just a private citizen and there are certain rules that should govern and one of those should be openness when the president said he was going to drain the swamp by not releasing his tax returns, by not making public who visits who comes to the White House, by not releasing, by not making public waivers, he's making the swamp even dirtier and yes. thicker. Yes. anything wrong with buying American, but the president talks one way and does another. So he said on the pipeline, oh, we're going to make sure it's steel made in America by American workers. In fact, the steel's coming from Italy and China and a bunch of other countries because he didn't do that. We had a water bill, water and sewer, lots of steel use. We had an amendment that said buy America, which I supported. We all supported Democrats. The Republicans tried to take it out. We urged President Trump to stand with us and say, keep the Buy America provision in, and he didn't. So on this issue and on so many others, the president says one thing but does another. And what he does hurts American workers. Senator, Senator do you just say this. Um, I led a letter to the Turkish president saying, give freedom of press to journalists. Stop arresting journalists who are no longer, who don't like you. That's why they're angry at me. I'm proud they are. Senator, how concerned are you about North Korea? Senator?
Well, look, I mean, the bottom line is that I've always been for strong support for NYCHA at every level of government, but our number one job right now is to fight the federal government cuts, plain and simple. I have never seen cuts like this. They are devastating. Everyone's concerned about homelessness. These cuts will increase homelessness. The best way to put someone over, put a roof over someone's head, is maintain places like the Elliott House. Uh, uh, Houses. Senator, on topic, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, you've gone to these rallies and say no cuts to Gateway, no cuts to Second Avenue Subway, no cuts to HUD. Uh, where, where, you know, this has been a sort of a, a, a refrain of yeah. your country. I'm, I'm curious. The tax loopholes that so many wealthy people and, benefit from. And my, and my Instead question, of cutting my, transportation, education, housing, health care, you know, the wealthy, God bless them, are doing great in America. We need help for working people and whose incomes are declining. Senator, wait, Senator, Senator, that wasn't a question. The uh, the question for me, the question is, where is one issue you're willing to compromise with the, with the Republicans and with the well, president? We've to already, we this Democrats funding? have come up with a trillion dollar infrastructure proposal that would help fund Gateway, that would help fund the Second Avenue subway, that would put 15 million people to work in good paying jobs. We've sent the administration our infrastructure plan. We haven't heard a peep out of it. Have you heard anything about President Trump's infrastructure plan? He keeps talking we about it. We have not heard a thing yet. We've asked. And I'll tell you, if they just do it with tax breaks for these financial institutions, then nothing will get built. It'll 82 cents on the dollar will go to the, um, to the people who finance it instead of the federal government financing it. And when they build something, they'll have to put tolls in and average people will pay. That's not the way to go. Yeah. Off topic, Senator, North Korea. I got to North okay, Korea. Last one for this nice gentleman in the round glasses. North Korea. North Korea. I disagree with what the president has proposed. The best, the, the one place we have pressure on North Korea is the Chinese. They do all the trade with them. Instead of being soft on China on trade, the president had promised he was going to be tough on China. The best way to get the Chinese to cooperate on uh, North Korea is to hit them in their mother's milk, which is how they take advantage of us with unfair trade laws. Go after that, you'll find all of a sudden they'll cooperate much more on North Korea. Thank you, everybody.